Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I wanted to start off by uh, looking at a recent uh, satellite image. If you look at it, we can see that uh, outside the settlements themselves, we can see lots of different kinds of use for the landscape, like uh, agricultural areas, or forested areas, or water bodies, or, or even roads that are part of the cognitive landscape. And the, these, while these areas are not directly inhabited, uh, they form an important part of the landscape as they give the context of the settlements themselves. It is no, no wonder that uh, one of the, the core fundamentals of landscape archaeology is that we have to consider these uh, areas when we try to uh, analyze a settlement. Uh, we have to uh, understand these areas uh, if we want to map the patterns of the settlements themselves and when we want to find out uh, the driving factors behind uh, their location and their, uh, and their dispersion. And this, uh, this is especially important if we are uh, trying to extrapolate from this data uh, when we try to uh, create theoretical models of the area that we do not yet know. Uh, this is my, uh, this is the theme of my uh, PhD research that is uh, ongoing at the moment. Uh, my aim is to create a, a, a theoretical model of the Kapos River Valley uh, in Hungary of the Roman settlement structure of uh, this area. Uh, I base this model mostly on uh, currently known sites and uh, published and archival data. And one of the key issues with this uh, kind of data, however, is that uh, in most cases uh, they only record that uh, where, where sites uh, are located. But it is hard to determine if an area is empty because it was really empty or because it was just not, uh, not researched yet. And this introduced uh, quite a problem for my modeling uh, for the extrapolation uh, process. Uh, what I needed was uh, a large scale controlled field work that I could compare my data uh, to and that I could, uh, that could help me out. Uh, a big help came from the project you can see uh, on the screen uh, now, which is running at our institute uh, at the moment, and uh, of which I am a part of. Uh, the aim of this project is to map the changes in the early to middle Neolithic uh, settlement patterns or, and material culture in southern uh, Transdanubia, which, is, which roughly correlates with my uh, area of interest. As a part of this project, we are uh, conducting micro-regional level surveys uh, in three key areas uh, of uh, southern Transdanubia, the southern Balaton uh, region, the Tona Isharkas region, and the southern Baranya Hills uh, region. For this presentation, I'm going to concentrate on the Tona Isharkas micro-region which is located at the confluence of uh, three major uh, waterways uh, near the Danube. From the north, the Sharvis and the Shio rivers, and from the southwest, the Völtsegi uh, stream, uh, as they flow into the Danube uh, in a wide uh, floodplain area, which dominates this uh, microregion, as, as you can see from from the elevation model. This uh, floodplain area is bordered to the north by uh, low-lying plateaus, uh, to the south by, uh, by a high uh, hill, the Palanque Mountain, and to the west, uh, some low, lower hills and, uh, and the valley of the Völtsegi uh, stream. We conducted a GPS-aided uh, extensive uh, field survey in this area uh, to create a complete coverage uh, of this uh, region as much as uh, we can. We 
adopted a method developed by Gabor Mesterházy and his colleagues for, uh, for heritage management uh, projects, uh, but it fit our purposes uh, really well. It is based on a 100 by 100 meter uh, virtual grid of the area, uh, where surveyors are uh, walking in 25 meter fixed uh, intervals at uh, fixed GPS coordinates always to the north uh, and to the south. Um, fine material is recorded uh, based on this uh, virtual grid. Uh, so we can analyze uh, the fine numbers individually from every uh, cell. It is important to mention that uh, every find is collected, not just the Neolithic finds, but uh, all the finds, regardless of their age, uh, which means that I can use the data from this survey uh, for my Roman age uh, studies. Also, every possible area is surveyed without any bias, which was not always, uh, which was not always the case in, in earlier uh, research. We really aim to create a standardized, a uniform coverage of the entire uh, landscape, uh, which we can always uh, analyze in a 25 by 100 meter grid uh, as well. As a result of our surveys, uh, we have covered roughly 1,500 uh, hectares uh, of the area, uh, which is around 45% of the total area of the microregion. Uh, the parts that were left out were mostly uh, built up areas or forested areas or where we couldn't conduct the field survey. Um, but even in this uh, large an area, we could identify large numbers of, uh, of different sites and different, um, different uh, areas, but also uh, a lot of off-site areas as uh, well, where little or no finds were, uh, were found, but we know that they have been covered, so we can calculate with that. Uh, these kind of off-site areas are even more prominent if we uh, filter for the Roman age uh, finds from the area. We can see lots of empty areas now. Uh, in total, we have uh, identified seven uh, distinct clusters of uh, Roman habitation in the area. Uh, three of them are uh, quite intensive and uh, four other sites were of much lower uh, intensity, but they are uh, still present. It is obvious uh, from the data that uh, the intensive sites are all located in the west uh, central parts of the microregion near the confluence of the Shio and the Sharvis uh, rivers. Uh, and in the eastern part, we can only see some very low intensity uh, sites or nothing at all. Um, we can correlate this data with uh, elevation models to gain more insight uh, into, into the, uh, the settlement distribution in the area. And uh, we can see that all the sites, uh, even the low intensity ones uh, here in the eastern parts, are located on the first, uh, on the low terraces above the regularly flooded areas or the flood plains, uh, regardless of their uh, intensity. Uh, but uh, we can also identify uh, in both areas some areas of, uh, of activity, some zones of activity around uh, the sites themselves. We can see that uh, because we have data on the, uh, on the empty areas, um, we can observe that uh, there are some, uh, some areas which we would consider prime real estate from the, from the comparison with the known uh, sites that are still uh, empty, both in the area of the known sites but also in the eastern areas. So even though we don't have any uh, large-scale habitation in the eastern areas, 
we can see that uh, there is uh, there are areas that could be uh, inhabited. This is further contrasted if we if we put up the uh, the known artifacts from all the other eras. We can see that in the area or in the east where there was virtually no habitation or, or little habitation in the Roman era, uh, we can see some quite high level habitation in other eras. In fact, this area was inhabited in every single other uh, era uh, except for the Roman, uh, Roman age, which is a very interesting uh, conclusion for uh, or very uh, interesting uh, information. We can also see some off-site uh, scatter in the area, which could be interpreted as uh, the areas actively uh, used um, around the sites. But we can see this even away from the sites. So um, even though there is little habitation uh, in the eastern floodplains, there is still evidence that this area was used, just not inhabited. Uh, as directly as in the uh, west central uh, areas. Um, now that we know this uh, data, we can s clearly see the disparity in um, in the location of sites and in the uh, in the settlement patterns uh, towards the east. Now we can start thinking about the driving factors. What is causing this uh, this disparity? And um, one way to think of it are the environmental factors. Uh, the obvious one being the, the elevation uh, in an area, as uh, we have discussed uh, earlier. Also possible would be uh, a difference in soil quality uh, or a change in the climate and the water levels. Um, we are still working on, on deducing this information as we get better soil maps of the area. Uh, a difference in climate is possible, but considering that uh, there was habitation in every single other uh, era, it is highly unlikely that uh, this climate change will only affect the Roman uh, era uh, sites. What we can, what we can also uh, look at are social factors. Um, and in this case, uh, what uh, comes up is the proximity to the border. Uh, proximity to the Ripa Pannonica, the, the, the border of the Roman Empire, which runs along the Danube uh, in the area. And if we, uh, if we uh, put the, the probable uh, route of the uh, Limes Road, uh, on our map and the known watchtowers along uh, along the the border, we can see some level of correlation between the habitation in this uh, eastern part and that there is no habitation east of, of this Limes Road uh, uh, Limes Road area, which is quite an interesting uh, conclusion and something that we could, should uh, look further into. The way uh, we are planning to move forward with this, and the, the way I, I intend to uh, put these conclusions into uh, my model is uh, by looking at the other uh, microregions that are that we are still uh, researching uh, and which are still not uh, completed uh, to see if these patterns uh, persist. If there is a, a difference between the floodplains and the higher terraces. These uh, microregions also have uh, these kinds of environments, and they are much further inland from the uh, from the border. So we could see even some uh, social aspects. Uh, but I'm also looking at uh, some targeted microregions along the social factors, like the effect of a major road uh, on the settlement patterns. Uh, as I do in uh, northern Baranya County uh, near Shaj, where a major uh, trade route is running through uh, a quite uh, through a valley in, with a floodplain, and by deducing the settlement patterns, I could uh, understand more about the driving forces 
uh, and by understanding more and by quantifying these uh, driving forces, these could be uh, put into uh, the settlement pattern models uh, that I'm trying to build of the Kaposh River Valley. Thank you very much.